Hello everyone, my name is Denise and today I have uh, Elizabeth with me. She's a, a psychologist from Chile, recently moved to Singapore. And uh, in Chile, she was an expert. She did like psychodrama group therapy. That is really what she's really good at. And uh, more recently, in recent years, she got trained in EMDR, uh, a kind of, of trauma-based focus therapy. Um, she got inspired to do this EMDR because of her volunteer work at a refugee center and she knows how e effective EMDR can be on healing people who are recovering from trauma. So now she does uh, online counseling with uh, people speaking, uh, Spanish speaking people or English speaking people, online counseling and, and she can also see in person if, if required. So if there's anything like you want to contact uh, Ali after today's, uh, after watching today's video, I'll leave her contacts at the bottom and my description so you know where to contact her. So, okay, on to today's topic. We're going to talk about why do some people feel empty inside? So we'll begin with like a definition of what this emptiness means. And then we'll go on to why does this emptiness happen? And finally, on some uh, ways that we can cure the emptiness when we spot it in ourselves or, or when we detect it in others. So, okay, without further ado, we'll just dive right into the topic. So what does emptiness inside actually mean, Ali? Yeah, hello, uh, hello everyone. I'm happy to be here. And yeah, uh, this topic is, is uh, so deep. Um, I think it, in my point of view, um, emptiness, it means the feeling of meaninglessness, the, the feeling of uh, like we have no sense, we are doing something and, and we cannot find uh, enjoyment, we cannot find the, the authentic feeling of being alive. That is the, I think, um, that happens when we cannot listen to our inner gallery, for say. As a, we all have a different part inside ourselves. Um, that part I, are created through our life by our uh, caregivers, um, our environment, uh, early relationships. So we are creating all these parts inside, inside ourselves. However, no, all of these parts are healthy. Many of them are. If, if we have, for example, good experience, we create good um, inner resources, for example, inner resources. But if we have no a good experience, we can create unhealthy patterns, uh, roles inside us. And that is, is why um, if we don't understand that dynamic inside of ourselves, um, sooner or later we're going to find this sensation of meaning, me, meaninglessness. Meaninglessness. Okay. Is that right? Yeah, meaninglessness. Yeah. So what I'm hearing, Ali, is that uh, emptiness is in a way a sense of meaning meaninglessness. No matter how much we do, uh, or like like in the case I'm thinking of, like how much good food we eat, how much uh, good company we've had, uh, how well we do in our career, we just don't feel any true satisfaction. We can't truly feel alive, right? And like what you mentioned is a bit like, if you've got good experiences, it will lead to good inner resources and also help you to feel fully alive. But if we had a lot of bad experiences, it might lead to some unhealthy patterns, which might also manifest in a form of emptiness and meaninglessness. Yeah. Yeah, for example, if we, um, if right now we, we have a lot of criticisms from that, uh, uh, that is his treatment is is a, a lot of uh, um like when we don't have someone who is there for understand ourselves because that also happened because we cannot um we we don't understand our preference we don't know what 
what we want. We, we don't understand our feeling. So for example, if growing now, uh, we have very criticism parents and this was very difficult to express our feeling because it was not good. So, and that was for both parents. It is very um, difficult, uh, th this situation. So um, it is pos possible that this person uh, create, have a damage in, in the identity, in the sense of self, sense of uh, propose, sense of propose, you, you, do you understand? Uh, what I'm hearing is that um, um, if you have two parents who are very critical and both are not giving you uh, the space to express your emotions and they also don't mirror those emotions back to you, it might lead to a lack of sense of, uh, of self. You stop knowing your own feelings. You stop having a fully developed sense of identity. So when that happens, it can also lead to a feeling of meaninglessness and emptiness. And you sort of forgot, you maybe you didn't even start to understand or learn about yourself. What do you truly like? What are your tastes and preferences? What do you truly want? Because in your upbringing, there wasn't space to, to even discover that. Everything was determined by the parents or you chose exactly what your parents wanted you to like in order to survive. Okay, so I expanded a lot. I, I'm not sure if any of that uh, uh, captures what you're trying to communicate. Yeah, I think uh, for that people, it uh, it is very difficult to to find their own center, feel anchor in 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 their own center, satisfy what what you are doing, because you didn't have that encouragement. You never. Uh, I don't know. I have clients sometimes say, "Wow, my my mom never said congratulations. Do you have a, I don't know, a good mark in your school? Congratulations. No, it, that is just, um, that is just your duty. You have to do that. So, wow. Um, for example, in this case, my client has a, a half damage. Her, he's a, a self a sense of propose. When he wants to do something, he's just, why you gonna do that? Is don't gonna have anything different in my life. And the sense of propose is affected. I think I think Ali, what you're trying to say, this sense of propose, I think what you're trying to say is the um the confidence to ask for something that they want to request for that. They lack that confidence to do it in a very explicit way because maybe when they're young when they ask for it uh they were put down or say that ah oh, that's a stupid thing to want or the or, or like stuff like that so they they when they grow up they are afraid of asking for what they want and then on a deeper level they're afraid to even know what they want because knowing what you want uh if you don't get it you get very disappointed so if you have no way of getting it perhaps it's better to not even know what you want so when it goes really deep, it affects the sense of identity. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very difficult for this person to develop um, um, and differentiate the, the true self. So because they, they are not able to live it. Because they don't know. So if you are not able to build up your, your own foundation, you cannot rely on your own emotion. If you cannot rely on your emotion, you uh, you cannot understand your needs. So what happened? So, the affirmation yeah. come from outside. We all the time depend from outside uh, recognition or advice. We cannot follow our own GPS, <laughs> something like that. So mm -hmm. um, what happened what? here? Uh, we find we need external substitutes. For example, like you say, uh, food or, or also possession or certain quality, functioning, etc. So we, we hide in our true self, our inner need and our preference behind that defense. And that defense create 
a momentaneous sense of safety, but it's just momentaneous because sooner or later you're gonna go to this sensation of uh, emptiness and the deep state of emptiness is depression. So uh, for example, um, have you ever known people who uh, link with, uh, have a, a contact with other, always bases on the super Herbert uh, role? They always want to help, they always are focused totally in other people, but they never can see their needs. So they follow others regardless their own needs. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. This can be one of the this mechanic defense. So it, sure. it is also a role in your life. It's a part of, of your life. That it's created, but maybe the only way how we uh, have a relationship with our mother is was um, helping her, for example. Mm -hmm. So we create that, we learn that if we help, we're going to receive love. And we always find a way to help others, but it's good to help others, but if that um, is uh, your personal value, is the, is the way how you relate with people, the only way how you relate with people, you're going to feel uh, super tired. Mm. And, and it, it will be very difficult to say no, because you're going to feel guilty, selfish. And, and yeah, can you see the, the inner conflict? That's right. So, Actually, yeah. I see. Like what I'm, I'm hearing is that um, in this particular case that you're sharing, uh, what the drama of the gifted child this is the book that I'm thinking of uh, by Alice Miller. It's about a child from young. She, she was almost like early parentalized and asked to look after the mom. So all her value comes from doing what the mom needs, doing what the mom wants. And when she ever tried to voice her own needs, her mom would say, nonsense all those things are not important so because of that her way her way that she's formed all her defenses are to shelve aside her own needs and then adopt the superhero archetype and go around helping everyone but as you rightly put it's very tiring it's very tiring and it's also a very proud way of of developing a form of uh of communal narcissism it's very it's, it involves pride because then you're always just giving and you never take whereas it, it really takes someone who's humble and grounded to be able to say no I'm not going to do that I'm tired or like this is only to the extent I'm going to help beyond that I'm going to give you your own autonomy to help yourself so I think what I'm trying to say is that that this feeling of emptiness like you mentioned the end point is depression but I think before you reach depression there's another interim, interim point which is maybe narcissistic traits which actually is quite common you know depression and narcissistic traits coming together. Yeah. As another thing that I picked up was this need for external. Uh, if there is no internal GPS, then it's replaced by external need for external affirmation. So the person becomes very approval seeking, needing constant advice, constant validation, because she, whatever she gives inside is not enough. There's, not, there's this emptiness inside, which is not if only just a lack of, of feeling alive, the lack of set, lack, lack of satisfaction is also the lack of the internal GPS. Can you tell us more about this lack of internal GPS? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. internal GPS it comes when when we understand our feeling, when we can recognize and uh, accept. Because when one, one part is recognized, okay, I feel that. But the other part is have compassion and accept that. Because sometimes we say, okay, I feel that, but I am, I am not allowed to feel. Especially if it happened that we were talking before. If, for example, it was a risk, express our feeling. If, if our mom, um, uh, attachment, for example, was to, uh, unstable or scared so express your feeling represent a, a risk so what we learn we learn mm -hmm, stop expressing our feeling 
stop pay attention to our feelings. So that is because we we, we cannot follow our GPS because we, we didn't learn to do it. Because the, the only way how we can learn when we are a child and we express one emotion, we need somebody else who understand that emotion, mirroring that emotion. So, and then mm -hmm. we create that neural connection in our brain, that part of self-regulation, self-foundation. But if we like, don't mm -hmm. have that, or um, um, it is too, it is too the, um, the, like I said, it is too risk, there is too much risk on express. Uh, yeah, we, we just stop to follow our GPS. We just cannot learn that part, cannot create that part in our brain. As a result, when we are adult, we deal with our emotional dysregulation all the time. And mm -hmm. second, we, we need that, that kind of um, subtitles. Hmm. So I, I, I think that is... I think that is actually hitting the core of a lot of the, uh, what do you call it, axis two, is it those like uh, bipolar, not bipolar, sorry, a borderline, narcissist, histrionic, they all tend to need a lot of external validation because of this emptiness inside. I, I just I just observed that, and it may be exactly like what you said, um, when they were young, the family system didn't create enough space or enough mirroring for their feelings. Hence, right, they never develop those neural connections in their brain. So they don't know how to identify their feelings. Or even if they know, they know I'm very angry now. But instead of having that ability to have acceptance, yes, I'm angry now. This is a bad situation. It's normal to feel angry. And anger is actually a permitted feeling to have in this circumstance. It is what I want to do with the anger that counts. And not enough guidance to work through the anger and come to a resolution. It stops, it just stops at that, like anger, just anger, anger. They can't have self-compassion. They have no self-acceptance or, or, or acceptance to that painful feeling. So one of the things I noticed also, people with the same traits, they tend to cluster, which is, I need to be happy all the time. I need to put on my smiley face and be chirpy and happy all the time. If anger fear, sadness, or any other feelings come, the correct thing is to pretend they don't exist. Mm -hmm. But yet, yet these people can be hypersensitive to other people's anger or sadness. Once there's in the external cues, right, in their attachment figure, let's say maybe their new spouse or their boss have some a flash of anger, immediately they will do whatever they can to try to regulate, to pander to that person so that person feels better. It's, it's, a, it's something that they picked up when they were young. But as they're doing all that, they, they so-called neglected their own feeling. And, and when they go home, they just feel so empty inside. Okay, uh, Did I uh, touch on anything that you might want to expand on? Yeah, so, um, that happened also because all the resources that we need to generate our identity, our sense of self, is coming for um, all, all that attitude, main connection, uh, be, be seen. Uh, all that, that resources are not present sometimes. So that is because we cannot integrate our, our self-identity, our sense of self. I get it, I get it. I, I, I sense that what, what you are trying to say is that there is a particular kind of resource uh, that leads to resilience leads it's like a set of tools that people that some people failed to develop due to their early childhood parenting or their early childhood trauma those tools were not there so tools is like a kind of a metaphor or heuristic but but what you're talking about is the neural connections that were not formed so when they were they're under sufficient stress um and the anger or the painful feelings come out they may not be able to cope or regulate so they'll have like rage for the whole day or they will become very punitive towards themselves very critical for having anger something like that any thoughts mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um like 
if we don't create that part uh, um, as a result of don't have these resources in, in our development and through our life, <coughs> we need to create in our own. That is, is, is where, uh, that is when therapy comes here because we need to create those resources in order to uh, create that uh, neural connection and achieve the, the self-regulation that we need. So here is, is where therapy is, is gone. Yeah, as I, I think this is a good time to, to move on to the next part of the discussion, which is what to do. If you are one of those who tend to have this emptiness feeling or you are depressed or you tend to to not know what to do with your own emotions so, so what is what 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 therapy should you participate in or should you ask for okay what should you ask for when you go for therapy what sorry i can okay you can oh, you sorry, sorry. I, I, I can i can i think there was a plane that was flying across this why <laughs> Okay, anyway, what I'm saying is that if you are one of those that experience emptiness inside, uh, what, what to do now that, you, okay, maybe you say go for therapy. So what, what can you expect to happen in therapy and how would therapy help you? Yeah, I think the first step is, is tell everyone that if you feel that, that does not mean that you are crazy, that not mean that you have a chronic mental disease or... No, it's just a part also of um, a, knowing yourself, part of self-discovery, emotional discovery, emotional assessment, and, and also understand you, your story, your, your uniqueness. You, you have a own story. You have a own perception of all your experiences. So uh, it's not meant that you're crazy. It's meant that sometimes you need to get into know more deep some part. It's like a home. You have a different rooms. And sometimes you don't know all the rooms, but they continue there. Um, yeah, sometimes we don't have the key to open the door. So that is the idea is try with one key or another key. But uh, I think the... The difficult part is get the step because we are afraid to 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 face all that all that emotion all that experience. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. It's almost as if um you're like a little child again. When you were young, your parents didn't do that with you, which is to offer the emotional validation and mirroring. So that part was never formed. So there could be some rooms in your house, if I want to expand on that metaphor, that's just completely empty or filled with darkness. And it's quite scary to go in yourself. So having a therapist walk you to that door and gently open that door with you and walk through that door and explore that room and maybe, you know, decorate it a bit, get to know it a little bit so that every single room in your house has now been explored and given enough TLC, tender living care, I guess I guess that will make you better. Of course, that room is utterly empty and dark, which is, I think, <laughs> draws back to the original topic of emptiness. That room is utterly empty and dark because no one dared to go in there. When you were young and you wanted to go there, your parents just shut the door. <laughs> Every time you say, Mommy, I have some needs. I'm feeling scared right now. Shut the door. Until eventually you... You, you not, don't even dare to put your hand on the knob to open it. But I think in therapy, it's important to, to build enough rapport with the, the counsellor to be brave enough to open that door. And then the counsellor, the therapist also will say, it's okay, it's fine. This is part of your growing up. It's part of your development. You missed it as a child, but let's do it now. Let's go to those places you're scared to go. Experience those feelings. Learn to accept them. Have some compassion. I guess in, in doing that, slowly, slowly, you start to get back your authenticity and get back the core that you are lacking in. Okay, any thoughts and feelings at this point? Yeah, and our feeling are our guided in, in this uh, trip. So uh, I, I recommend um, pay attention how you, you treat your feelings. Are you um, 
I don't know, minimize them? Are you accept that or are you absolutely aware and aware of your feeling? Or sometimes you make fun of your feeling? I don't know. There is some people that it's also another mechanic defense, like always be, uh, be funny, like uh, make fun of the feeling, make fun of uh, it's no. What, what is, you are not, in the end, you are not recognizing what is going on inside. You know, so that is a, a super important. Recognize how you treat your feeling. Point now the, the way how you deal with your emotion and your needs. Yeah, I, you're right. Some people deal with it with humor, with minimizing and humor. Like I don't think that is funny at all. But 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 I like like as they're talking about their own trauma, they're laughing and but no one else is thinking that it's funny. Of course, if if everyone else is sensitive now, they wouldn't think it's funny. But it's the person's way of coping. Like like yes, this bad thing happened, but ah ha ha ha. They just sort of make a joke out of it. You're right. That's a defense. And and it has helped them up to this point, but I, I think eventually to 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 ask that that humor if if you use IFS ask the humor like thank you so much you have served your function let's ask you to move aside for a while so that you can see the raw authentic feeling behind that and 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 really get to know yourself get to go into that dark space. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, intellectualize also can be another. Yeah, <laughs> intellectualize. That is actually, to be honest, that's my my main barrier, which is I tend to intellectualize rather than to sit in the feeling, which is exactly why I really like experiential therapies, things like like psychodrama, like schema therapy, that that really just shuts down the left brain and you're in the experience, right? So no longer you're intellectualizing, you've got no room for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think that is the first step, and then is uh, the you you goals. Uh, but you goals in your own terms, mm -hmm. like yeah. because in here when we find our preference, when we find what we love, what we want to do, is create our own sense of progress. Because now society have a lot of standard that you push you all the time a lot of expectation so i think that in here is under when you find uh, your preference what you love and then is learn encourage yourself in a positive way because yeah we need to learn that if we didn't have that when we grew up we need to learn as adults how we can develop a positive sense of ourselves and That's encourage right. us. Like you mentioned just now, if you like the internal GPS, you tend to replace it with an external validation, which might come in the form of societal expectations as well. That's why it's important to have your core values very intact and, and to really just put them together and say, that are they aligned? You know, society says I have to uh, to look like a model, to have a big car and a big house and a bustling career. But is that really what I want? Is that aligned to my values, right? Because if there's no internal core and it's just emptiness inside, and then you're just driven ex entirely by external validation, then you might end up doing things that may not be the best for you. For example, <laughs> social media, some girls, right, if they dress very skimpily, they get a lot of likes. And then they get motivated to do more and more of those content and slowly slipping down the very slippery slope into into really bad content but 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 that that, that is if they lack an internal core and internal compass because eventually when they do that they lose self-respect also so so mm -hmm. so those people have higher risk of that especially if they are driven by external validation and they don't have the internal core i mean inter inside it's all empty right yeah, so I think the important thing here is find your preference and focus on do your best, the best that you can do without judgment and find um, like uh, authentic pleasure in what you are doing because there is no need to pleasure anybody. That is the thing when you just, just, just is um, uh, the focus 
is in ourselves and stay to others. And when we can do the best, uh, whatever we are doing, I don't know, whatever. I mean you know, like what what comes to my mind now are those that um, because this this kind of traits also cluster with this thing called people pleasing. So they don't like themselves. They feel empty inside, but they get a short relief, a short burst of relief, not even pleasure, just relief when when people say good things about them. Hence, they become more and more people pleasing. And 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 they are always looking at themselves through the lenses of another person instead of through their own lens. That means I don't need another person in the room. I, Denise, can evaluate myself and see myself through my own eyes. But but those who are empty inside because they lack that that ability to uh to self evaluate, they tend to like let's say in this situation, I'm saying, what is Ellie thinking about me now? What are the audience who are looking at this video thinking about me now as I'm saying that? So instead of, I'm not, I'm just saying this because I want to communicate this. I think it's a great point. I want to, I don't care that much of what, how it lands. I just want to say this because I think it's right and it's good. It's going to be helpful. Instead, they are looking at themselves, how the audience are viewing me now. How is Ellie viewing me now? So if you're in that rabbit hole, so to speak, what to do? Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like Ray, your own sense of progress i am because when we compare with others and most part of the time we compete in a negative way i have less than my neighbor i know i am doing i don't doing very well so yeah we, we are spending our energy and our focus in in others but if we create our own sense of progress, we say, okay, today I am here, tomorrow I wanna be better. But is my my own uh, uh, maturity? Maturity? No, no, no. It's my 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 own uh, way to uh, to validate. It's my own validation. Oh, my own validation. Okay. No, not the, to mature this. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think um, it okay, brings to the point that everybody, right, this one I learned from Jordan Peterson watching his uh, YouTube videos, say that everybody should only compare with themselves. They just have to be a better version of themselves because everyone has their own set of factors, own set of life experiences and values. So if you benchmark, it's like comparing an apple to an orange, it just don't make sense. So we just have to compare with an older version of ourselves and just try to move forward and be a better version of ourselves every day. I think that is a much better way of moving forward. So, you know, Ellie, I think one of the, your strengths in terms of a therapist is your treatment plan. Your treatment plan and then marking progress and tracking progress, personalized and all that. I think that is something I really wanted to, to hone and to learn from you. That's really your strength. Ah, yeah, yeah. Another thing that I forgot to tell you is the fear to commit a mistake. Oh, okay, okay. Because tell, the, tell. the other thing that we can, um, we have to overcome, over, overcome to do this. Mm -hmm. The fear to, to commit a mistake because uh, sometimes we're going to try something, but uh, it's not going to be good in the beginning. And it's okay, we can try again, try again. And that is the thing, the two. Uh, explore ourselves maybe we're going to explore something and we like and then we stop and that no mean that we lose our time that means we are discovering ourselves as well it's part of the the urine part of the tree so that is i like one i like that i think uh, what let's let me phrase it in a different way maybe when you were young your family system didn't create enough freedom for you to try out many things they enforce it you have to learn piano you have to learn ballet. After this, go for uh, maybe Spanish class or something like that. Your parents decide. So when you're old and now you are now given your own free reign to try everything, you might get scared of failure. That's fine. Just try it. Let's say you go for three ballet lessons or now you want to learn uh, a new language, you want to learn Japanese. You go for a few lessons, you don't like it, you can always stop and try something else. You try to explore all those unexplored territory on the map and find out what fits, what you really like, and what brings satisfaction. You don't have to ask people, like ask your mom again, hey, mommy, is this a great thing to try? Don't have to, now you're an adult, you can just try it, and you make some mistakes, that's fine. I think I learned this one from my 
my supervisor Alan something about like when you start something new there, there are bound to be some teething pains or some hurdles and that's normal you just have to push through that and it gets better if you like it enough that you find the motivation to push through push through push through push through that then you slowly gain mastery I really like that way of thinking mm, yeah yeah the way to think is because all our experience and all give us um a gift, I think. Mm -hmm. All, all the uh, even if they are difficult, they we can they can be an opportunity to set uh, new skills. Yes. Sorry, yes. That, that is, um, so yeah, in therapy, uh, why we are doing, you know, what you can expect to work in therapy. Um, First is understand why uh, what in the past is linked with the present problem. The, the, that is the, the, we are studying the problem. Why we are why we, we, we are doing that? Why we are taking this decision? For example, when if we have problem with food or we have problem with I have a client that she she has problem with she has problem with, with social media. And, and she become obsessive with social medias and also buy, uh, he spent a, a lot of money buying, buying, buying things online and dating and that kind of thing. So, okay, what happened before, just before you start with this compulsion, with, with this behavior, just before. And then I study that. What I, I am taking this decision? What in the past is related to this reaction in the present. So we study that also we create goals. We set goals in, in our therapy. What are your goals for this therapy? What do you want to achieve when we finish this therapy? Uh, what uh, will we be able to do if this problem no longer exists? That is the first step of of the of the therapy, so the, the idea here also, and then all of this is also for create safety, because the first thing that our nervous system needs is feel safe. In order to open ourselves, see our any any emotion that comes, uh, need be need to be in a safe environment. So we need to create that in our in our first step, step in our therapy. So be sure that you understand me, okay? That I understand you. That we feel um, confident to because a client share with you a, a lot of things and think that they have never shared with anyone. So it's super important to create this environment of safe, safety sensation. So, and, and then um, we, we can, uh, in my case, as I, my objective is help the client to discover themselves little by little, by experiencing mm -hmm. their own feeling, their, their own needs. So that is because for me, super important, create this sense of safety. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he can be free to to explore his, the the self inside because uh, in the end the more you are able to admit uh, that uh, emotion ex experience your feelings is when when we can become more and more strong that is the idea so in order to do that we need to um increase the window of tolerance so uh, we can talk about difficult emotions um painful situation and we can tolerate that so we create resources uh, what i am doing in my in my therapy is great resources based on imaginary exercise i use a lot of imaginary um bilateral stimulation so with that we create resources. We create we, and with that resources we can repair the the damage 
from our early experiences and create the support, the foundation that we need to face our emotion now. Because we cannot face our emotion if we don't have foundation. It's like you, you're gonna learn swimming and you go to a big swimming pool and just jump on in the water and you just are terrified. You don't know how to move, you don't know how to keep yourself uh, floating. So we need to go step by step. And, to, and that is the same in here in, in therapy. We create safety, we um, increase the window of, of tolerance, um, and reduce the, what is uh, theoretically is reduce the activation of the amygdala and uh, the nervous system and activate the parasympathetic brain so we can feel safe. And, and yeah, that is, is the first. And then we move to reprocessing. So I, I like that. And I think EMDR got it quite, quite well covered in the protocol. Right, in, in like establishing the safety, the resources before going into the reprocessing. I think, yes, EMDR actually is a good uh, therapy to do if you've got this emptiness uh, issue. But off the top of my head, even something quite basic like person-centered therapy, just holding the space, reflecting back the emotions, that using your own self as a therapist to regulate, co-regulate with the client. And no matter how much the client cries or melts down, you're still there and you're still calm. That can be very healing as well. So I think long before the EMDR, right, when the, uh, Carl Rogers first did his PCT, he was actually doing a lot of really sophisticated things. He just didn't know it. He didn't really explain with neuroscience but but these days, yeah, once we know all that, it actually he was actually always just uh, co-regulating with his self, always just mirroring, and just creating a super safe space with his presence. Uh, any thoughts about that? Yeah. 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 Also, we can teach the client a specific thing like breathing exercises. Like we, we use a lot of uh, breathing exercises in yoga. I have learned in yoga, mm -hmm. like pranayama, like how you can use your breathing to activate uh, your parasympathetic brain. So uh, that, that sensation of come back to calm. Yeah, so I was just uh, breathe in and out as long as you can and focus on the tail end of your out breath yeah yeah like, belly breathing hmm. oh. yeah learn that from the body keeps the score by the basil van der Kolk. Uh -huh. and also from my yeah. Uh, yeah so this breathing is so good because uh, i was just discussing this with another friend about how scammers attack people they, they hijack the amygdala because he, he knows hypnotherapy, he knows neuro-linguistic programming. So he knows how it works. They they keep repeating the image that frightens you, which is like, uh, you don't give me the money now, your son will be knocked down by a car, for example. Then they'll just, just keep saying, your son will get knocked down by a car and describe the scene. So that will hijack the amygdala. So at that, time, that point when you're just out of your back, really, you cannot think logically, they'll make you do all kinds of weird things like, transfer your whole life savings so if in between that you can just pause and start breathing mm -hmm. I, I think that will really help because the it will reduce the stimulation of the amygdala okay um yeah ellie uh we've been talking for a while and i remember remember you said that you don't want the video to be too long so okay what is what do you want what is one last word that you want to tell everyone before we close today's uh video um, we can do things different now. <laughs> that is the is the last sentence. So we can rewire our identity. 
and we can have new choices. We can see our option because all the role, all the um, the thing that happened now, um, all the, the that part that I was talking in the beginning are inside of us. So we can change that. We can change our perception. All this sensation is fruit of our perception and the perception can be changed. If you cannot do it alone, find a therapy, but do it because it's super important. Stop with this now and not continue next gen with the next generation. So that is, is my, my, my last sentence. We can do things different. Perception can change and we can be free and we can have choices and we can have other options. Love that, love that. And like the scientific research is very clear that the neuroplasticity, it never ever goes away. So no exactly. matter how old we, I do, you can change. We can do it. We, we can create new uh, neuro connection in our brain. Neuro, yeah. neuro connection between uh, our past experience and our uh, present resources. And that create new perceptions, rewire our identity. Excellent. Okay, so uh, that is all that we have. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. And I really appreciate Ali. Somehow, right, Ali has a complimentary way of thinking to me. So every time I listen to her, she teaches me something that I don't know and she sees it in a different way that I cannot see. So I find it enormously satisfying and enjoyable talking to Ali every single time. That's, that's, that's my authentic feeling. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ali. I thank really appreciate you. having you thank on. Thank you. The same to me. I'm happy. Thank you. And thanks everyone for listening. Uh, if you all enjoyed this video, kindly press like, share and subscribe. Thank you everyone. God bless. Thank you. Bye.